Well, I will say this. I'm probably going to do most of my preaching today sitting down. And the reason that is, is because my wife and I decided to go on this new diet where you cleanse your system for a week. And we drink these shakes that have all kinds of crazy vegetables and fruit in them that taste absolutely blech. And I'm on the last day of it. And my blood sugar gets going like this at times. So I get a little dizzy um, when I'm standing up just for a couple seconds. And so I, rather than worry about um, getting dizzy at all, I figured I'll just sit down. So, uh, But this is the last day. And uh, then we get to start eating regular food again. So hopefully it was worth it. I asked my wife what she put in some of those things. She says, you don't want to know. I probably don't. I said, well, when I'm done with this, then you let me know what I just ate. So there was a message that I was going to do in March that God sidelined me to do something else, and so I'm going to preach it today. It's called Holiness Matters, The Highway to Holiness. Um, I want to talk again about the topic of holiness. That's one of the things that God's laid on my heart for this year. God wants us to realize that you can be holy, and I want to share some ideas on how to achieve holiness. Um, by way of introduction, I want to share with you some interesting thoughts I came across recently from a guy named Chuck Lawless, Vice President and Dean of Graduate Studies. Oh, do we not? Do we have Children's Church going? Sorry, I didn't dismiss for Children's Church. So if you haven't gone downstairs, run down there. Sorry, they already knew that. Um, a guy named Chuck Lawless, Vice President and Dean of Graduate Studies at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Here's what he does. He, he, he is a missions and evangelism professor. He says, these are some things that I've learned from Christians around the world, and I'm not going to get into all what they are. I'm just going to hit them real quick, and then I'm going to talk about one at the end. He says, in various roles, I've been privileged to travel the world, talk to global brothers and sisters in Christ, and learn from them. I may be the professor, but they always teach me. Here are some things we North American Christians can learn from them. Number one, the Bible is precious. Number two, worship is more than head-centered. Number three, prayer makes a difference. Number four, persecution is real. Number five, church membership means something. Number six, North American Christianity is not the center of the Christian world. Number seven, heaven will be really sweet. <laughs> now I could preach on a lot of these, but the last one I want to highlight is this. He's learned from people overseas, holiness matters. He says, I've been with some believers around the world who lean toward legalism, but seldom have I been with any who are as lax about sin as North Americans tend to be. Global believers often struggle with our apparent brand of non-life-changing Christianity. Holiness matters. We could go home after chewing on all those, but let me talk about holiness matters. It matters to God. It matters to believers around the world. And it should matter to Christians here in America. It should matter to you, and it should matter to I. So how do we become holy? What is the process we take to get there? According to Scripture, there is a highway to holiness we can take. Did you know that? Listen to this verse, Isaiah 35, 8. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. There is a way. It's called the highway of holiness. The New Living Translation says it this way, And a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the highway of holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. So will you travel that road of holiness, that highway to holiness, or will you be foolish and avoid the road? I want to make this as simple as possible. Let me talk about this. Number one, you can be holy. I've got a lot of verses here. I just want to read one. I could probably read a lot of them, but I want to skip through some of these to make it a little faster. In Ephesians 1, 4, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Holiness is a choice. Listen to what Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy 
and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. As one person said, we must desire holiness or we will choose unholiness at every turn because of the world and its innocent pressures, the weakness of our humanity, and the ever-present deception of the evil one. Holiness is your choice. You alone can decide to obey Christ or pursue your own selfish desires. It really is that simple. But we try and overcomplicate the issue in order to rationalize why we aren't further along the path to discipleship than we currently are. One person said, once you recognize holiness is your choice, you realize it is something attainable in your life. You need only choose to pursue it. Your relationship to God is exactly what you choose to make it. How badly do you want to surrender everything to Christ? It's entirely up to you. Did you know you have a responsibility to be holy as well? Along with the choice to be holy, you have a responsibility to make that choice. Hebrews 12, 14 puts it this way. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Make every effort. You have that responsibility to put in the effort to be holy. Some of you know a man named Jim Caviezel. You probably know him because he was the actor who portrayed Jesus in the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of Christ. He had this to say about holiness. I always believed in God. I would go to Mass most of the time, but I, take no, I had no idea of the calling to holiness. He did not understand the responsibility at first, but now he does. It actually changed his life doing that role. How about you? Mother Angelica, a famous nun, once said it this way, Holiness of life is not the privilege of a chosen few. It is the obligation, the call, and the will of God for every Christian. That would be a good place to say amen. <laughs> Holiness flows from our relationship with God. Did you know that? If you have a good relationship, your desire for holiness increases. If it's weak, your desire for holiness might be weak as well. John 15, 5 tells us this. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You cannot be holy without God's help. It's impossible. You cannot bear fruit apart from God. Let me say that again. Without God, it is impossible to be holy. Holiness flows from our relationship with God. Here's the problem, and I've talked about this before. We don't need to dumb holiness down. Don't dumb holiness down. Listen to what they did in the Bible in number 16.3. It's an interesting picture. A group of men came to oppose Moses and Aaron and said to them, Moses and Aaron, you have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them. And the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? What they were trying to do is dumb holiness down. Hey, we're all good. We're all fine. It's okay. We don't want to listen to what you have to say. They were trying to justify their rebelliousness is what they were trying to do. You see, we do similar things today as well. I talked about this before in a message earlier this spring, but holy is a term that we put in front of anything to describe God in our society. There's even a holy hand grenade in Monty Python. There's a holy hop when we sing excitedly. There are holy face masks that people are putting on to avoid the coronavirus. <laughs> there are holy buckets that we carry water with. If I dumb holiness down and make everything holy, or anything holy, then my unholy actions aren't so noticeable. Or maybe if I bring holiness down to my level, then I can justify my sin. That's a dangerous place to be. Pastor Chip Ingram says it this way, Holiness has become relative in our day, allowing us to lower the bar and pick and choose which commandments we will obey. Many Christians have a spiritual longing and desire to really change, but they don't know how. I believe one of the things God's calling us now in our season is holiness. Not just going to church, not just being a Christian, but living a holy life. So here's my encouragement to you. Don't make excuses for lack of holiness. We have lots of excuses we use. In 1 Kings 12 and 13, we read the story of a man named Jeroboam. He was the king of the northern tribes of Israel. He didn't want his people to go to the temple in Jerusalem, even though that's what God said. There's a temple in Jerusalem. Everybody goes there certain times of the year to worship. So he set up altars to the Lord in other towns, in Dan and Bethel. 
cities on the northern and southern part of their kingdom. He then put two golden calves there at the altars for the people to worship. His reasoning and his excuse, he didn't want to lose his kingdom. If the people didn't need to go to Jerusalem, then they wouldn't want to be a part of a united Israel. So they would stay where they were at. Matter of fact, you can go there to this day and see remnants of those same altars. And to top it off, he said that anyone who wanted to become a priest at these new altars could. You want to be a priest? Okay, we're looking for priests. Anybody want to sign up? Go ahead. He consecrated all sorts of people for these high places, even though God said they needed to be priests who were from the line of the priesthood. His excuse, they didn't need priests from the line of Aaron. We can have our own priests in the north. You see, we do similar things today. We come up with all kinds of excuses for sin and lack of holiness. Like, it's the society we live in that causes us to be less holy. It's not a big deal. God's grace will cover our sin. God doesn't expect us to be perfect, so it's okay if we do whatever we want. Or we say holiness is a good idea, but it's not necessary. Or we say our God understands where I'm at, and he's okay with it. As one person said, and I've probably used this before, excuses are like armpits. They both stink. (laughs) We shouldn't make excuses. You can and you should be holy. It's God's will for you. It's God's desire for your life. By the way, holiness is not boring. It's exciting. It's not niceness and and, uh, toned down Christianity. It's simply living the full life that God has for you and following the things that will make your life most fulfilling. Holiness is God's ultimate plan to make your life best. It's not to dull it down and say, oh, there's nothing I can do. If you live a holy life, I will tell you, your life will be exciting. It will be great. Let me say, I I want you guys to say something after me. To see if you're awake and also because I want you to understand what I'm saying. Say this after me. I can achieve holiness. Say it one more time. I can achieve holiness. You can. How do you achieve it? So how does one become holy? I want to give you some practical ways to do that today. How to achieve holiness. Holiness starts with a right relationship with Jesus. Holiness starts with a right relationship with Jesus. A guy named, a minister in the 1800s wrote this. His name was James Augie. He said, remember that holiness is not the way to Christ, but Christ is the way to holiness. (laughs) Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By believing in Jesus Christ as our Savior and accepting his gift of eternal life, that's the first step in your highway to holiness. You know, you can try to live a perfect life, but without Jesus in your life, it's futile. It's hard. It's not possible. You see, there are no shortcuts. You can't skip this and say, well, I'd like to live a holy life, but I don't want to have God involved with it at all. You can't skip that. You have to start with putting your faith in Jesus. If you're here today and you've never put your faith in Jesus, I'm telling you, it's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. And I bet most of the people, if not all the people but it, that are here in this place would tell you the same thing. You see, you don't come clean yourself up to come to Jesus to follow him. You come to Jesus and he helps you to live the life that's holy and clean in the way he wants. Joyce Meyer says it this way, when Jesus comes to live in our hearts, the seed of holiness is planted. I love that. Here's another way to achieve holiness. Holiness is lived out by shunning or avoiding sin. If you want to be holy, shun or avoid sin. Remember earlier this year when I said that holiness is first and foremost dying to the flesh? Maybe some of you remember that. You see, part of the process is this. One of the most important ways to achieve holiness is through defending yourself or avoiding things that can harm you. By avoiding or running from sin in the first place, you keep yourself pure and holy. Here are a few examples of things the Bible mentions that we should avoid or flee from. Proverbs 14, 16, shun evil. 2 Timothy 2, 22, flee the evil desires of youth. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 10, 14, flee idolatry. 
the worship of idols. First Timothy 6, flee all of this, and it has a list right before that, all kinds of ungodly attitudes and actions. You can add things like worldliness and drunkenness and gossip and a whole list of things throughout Scripture. If you don't believe me, read Galatians 5 for yourself, and you'll find a really long list of things that God tells us to avoid for our good. Holiness is exhibited in refraining from things that can harm you by avoiding sin. Dag Hammarskjöld, former Secretary General of the United Nations, once said this, You cannot play with the animal in you without becoming holy animal. Play with falsehood without forfeiting your right to truth. Play with cruelty without losing your sensitivity of mind. He who wants to keep his garden tidy doesn't reserve a plot for weeds. I like that. In the same way we can't play with sin, we have to keep away from it if we want a holy life. Here's another way to act in obedience in holiness. Holiness does walk in obedience to God. Jeff Bridges comments in his book on holiness Though we often think of holiness in a more narrow sense of separation from impurity and moral evil, in its broader sense, holiness is obedience to the will of God in whatever God directs. Listen to this part. No one can pursue holiness who is not prepared to obey God in every area of his life. You have to want to obey. You have to choose to obey. No one can pursue holiness who is not prepared to obey God. It's a 24-7, all-encompassing proposition. Holiness is not selective. 1 Peter 1, 2 says this, that we have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by His blood. We need the Holy Spirit's help. Human resolve and determination are not enough to live obediently and avoid sin. Obedience to God is a daily process that we need help with. But with God, all things are possible. So holiness starts with the relationship with Jesus. It's lived out by shunning or avoiding sin, and it it walks in obedience. What else can we say about achieving holiness? There's an old song we used to sing. Do you remember it? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Full in his wonderful face. You know, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, it helps us to live a holy life. It's achieved best by focusing on Jesus, not the bad or good behaviors that we're trying to do. If I tell you right now to think of a pink elephant, what comes to your mind? Probably a pink elephant, right? If you focus your time on what not to do, you set yourself up for failure. Focus on Jesus himself instead. He's the author of our faith. He is our righteousness. He is our helper, our advocate, and our everything. It is his image that we are to be conformed to. He will help you live a holy and victorious life. Like Hebrews 12, 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Do you want your faith to grow? Do you want to be holy? Then focus on Jesus so you can be like him because he is holy. What happens to many people is they get their eyes off Jesus and onto things that don't matter, like our circumstances, like what people think, like our stuff, I need more stuff, like our traditions, like the past, the future, or any number of things. You know what I think God's trying to do to us in this season? He's trying to say, forget the past. Forget what you've done in the past. Look to me, seek me, and I will give you the answers that you need. Look to me for all that you need. Charles Spurgeon once said it this way, if you think you can walk in holiness without keeping up perpetual fellowship with Christ, you, may have, a great, you, may, you have made a great mistake. If you would be holy, you must live close to Jesus. Alan Redpath, a famous uh, author and pastor from years ago, one of my favorites actually. If you've never heard that guy, read his stuff. It's awesome. He says this, give up the struggle and the fight. Relax in the omnipotence of the Lord Jesus. Look up into his lovely face, and as you behold him, he will transform you into his likeness. You do the beholding. He does the transforming. There is no shortcut to holiness. I love that. Focus on Jesus. We must keep our eyes on him to achieve holiness. 
That's the answer. There is no other way. So do you want to live holy in your life? Do you want to live that life that God's called you to? To walk the way or the highway of holiness? Let me read that verse in Isaiah 35, 8 again. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. So here's how I want to close today. I'm going to give you four practical ways to help you walk the way of holiness in your life. Okay? Because we can have all the right desires, but we have to walk it out. So here's four simple ways to walk the way of holiness. Number one, spend time with Jesus. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. E.M. Bounds says, a holy life does not live in the closet, but it cannot live without the closet. In other words, spending time with Jesus. Charles Spurgeon said, if you think you can walk in holiness without keeping up perpetual fellowship with Christ, you have made a great mistake. I just read this a minute ago. If you would be holy, you must live close to Jesus. Spend time with Jesus if you want to be holy. Number two, hang around holy people. Now, I'm not talking about put them on a pedestal, but I'm talking about people that are doing it right. Learn from them. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. When you hang around people who are holy, you become like them because they rub off on you. The old Puritan preacher Thomas Watson from the 1600s actually said this, Associate with sanctified persons. They may, be your, they, may, they may, by their counsel, prayers, and holy example, be a means to make you holy. <laughs> Number three, way to walk the way, highway of holiness. Start with one good decision that pleases God. Don't try to bite off more than you can chew. Start with one decision. 1 Timothy 4, 7 says that we are supposed to train ourselves for godliness. We can grow to be more godly and holy. How do you do that? By one decision at a time. Your holiness will grow a little. To me, holiness is simply a process of making one choice at a time that pleases God until holiness becomes a lifestyle and a pattern in your life. Don't do that thing that you shouldn't do. Do that thing you know you should do. You want to know what the greatest thing that thrills me as a pastor? One thing that brings great joy to my heart I mean, I love to hear stories of what God's doing at camp and all that. But when you come down to the nitty-gritty of what's going on, and this is what happens at camp, when me, each of you make at least one decision to please God, that just thrills my heart. One decision. When I say, oh, and you'll say, you know what? God spoke to me about this, and this is what I did. And I'll be like, yes, way to go. To avoid something harmful or obey God in a small way or a small decision to remain faithful to God's principles when it would be easier to lie or cheat or steal or do something unethical. See, by resisting the lure of the world, you can achieve great victories. It's a big deal when you choose to be right and holy. When you do that, I, as your pastor, want to shout from the rooftop, you did it! Great job! Keep it up! Congratulations! Praise the Lord! Because holiness starts with one great or godly decision as you focus on him. And then it grows. Don't underestimate that. Frederick Robertson, one of the greatest preachers of the 19th century England, said this, A holy act strengthens the inward holiness. It is a seed of life growing into more life. By the way, this is just a little side note. Why is it most of the people who understand and preached and lived holiness are people from a long time ago? <laughs> They got it, and we've lost it. For some of you, holiness may seem hard, but it starts with one decision at a time. Robert Green Ingersoll said this, in our era, the road to holiness necessarily passes through the world of action. <laughs> and number four, here's your last way to achieve the highway of holiness. Don't let one misstep stop you from living holy. I've said this so many times, and you probably recognize it, but you know what happens when we sin? When we blow it? The devil brings 
When we throw a pity party, the devil brings the bells and whistles to celebrate with us. Oh, you're rot- rotten. You blew it. Nobody's going to like you. God doesn't like you. You know what? You might as well just give up for right now. What I want to tell you this morning is mistakes can be serious and they're not, they're not to be lightly regarded. But if you ever make a mistake, get back up again. Don't let it stop you from living holy. Don't wait, make it derail you from God's best. Here's what often happens. People blow it. And they say, you know what, I'm done. I made a bad choice, I give up. There's a book written by John Maxwell. I haven't even read the whole thing, but I love the title. It's called Failing Forward. If you can fall forward and get back up again, then you learn from that mistake. You don't let it bury you. That's the way it should be. You are only a failure if you stop trying. I'm not trying to excuse sin or think it's not important, but when you do mess up, get back up again. Don't let a misstep stop you from being holy. Now I'm going to ask for a response from you, and then we're going to pray. Are you as holy as you want to be? Are you as holy as God wants you to be? Notice I didn't ask, do you live a perfect life? Or do you ever make mistakes? Or have you attended a church a certain amount or obeyed certain laws or traditions? I want to know, are you making holy decisions in your life? Are you striving to be holy? Holiness is a process that begins where you are and it continues with every good and right direction, uh, decision that you make. One step at a time. What is one thing that you can do today that will please God in your life? What is one obedience you need to do? What is one step you can do to be more holy? Maybe it's something you'll give up. Maybe it's spending time with God more. Maybe it's forgiving yourself for a bad choice and continuing to try to be holy. Maybe it's starting a relationship with Jesus because you've never done that before. Whatever it is, I want you to decide in your heart that you're going to do one decision to be more holy today. I don't want anybody to leave here and say, well, that was great, good ideas, but not to apply it. I want us to think of one thing that we can do. So would you bow your heads with me as I pray? Heavenly Father, for each one of us here today, you have called us to be holy, and you've enabled us to live that life. And God, I I pray you speak to every heart right now in the name of Jesus, wherever they're at, whatever they needed to do to take that next step to be holy. God, I pray that they would respond to your spirit. I pray for the one who might be watching today or might be here in this place that has never accepted you as their Lord and their Savior. They don't have a relationship with you. This might even be foreign to them. They don't understand, but they feel like the Spirit of God is calling them to holiness and to a relationship. And God, I pray for that one right now that they would come to know you. And God, maybe there's some here today, Lord, that have been doing things that are not pleasing in your sight. And you're calling them to give those things up, to let them go. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would have the strength and the courage to make that choice to let those things go right now. And God, for others, you're calling them to step out in faith in different areas, to be obedient, to walk in ways that maybe they're not used to or maybe they've never done before. And God, I pray that you speak to them about what they're supposed to do this morning. God, your word is so faithful and your spirit is so good to not leave us where we're at, but to try to draw us forward. And so, God, I pray for each and every one of us this morning that you would help us to be more holy. I pray this in the name of Jesus and for his glory. And everybody said, amen. I want to encourage you this week to live a holy life. God's got great things planned for you. As you leave, check and see if there's a newsletter out there for you. Um, There should be one. If not, grab a blank one. And um, God bless. We'll see you next time.